Now then, guys, how are you doing? Thank you for joining me again. So, this is, yeah, the aftermath of the quadruple. The absolute scenes at the end of the last episode. If you haven't watched the end of the last episode, there you go. Spoilers. Spoilers straight away. But yeah, scenes as we end up with the quadruple. A 4-1 victory over Chelsea in the final of the Europa League. You know, it was conclusive in the end. I would say that we caused an upset, 100%. You know, we should never have been there in the first place. We basically looked our way, fluked our way through, in fairness, to the final. You know, there's a couple of aggregate wins there, um, an extra time victory as well. And then we smashed Liverpool, and then we went on to smash Chelsea as well. So, yes, well-deserved winners. 109 points in the league. Scottish Cup, Betfred Cup, yep. Yeah. We clean sweep. Everything we're in, we won this season. And if things work out the same, we should have a Super Cup coming up before the season starts against the winner of the Champions League as well. So just a reminder that the channel will be moving. I did mention it at the start and at the end of last episode. It will be moving over to another channel that I'm doing with a friend. For me, like I say, we'll be playing a variety of games. But Football Manager will still be my main save. You know, Tyler may get involved with the save. I don't quite know. But for the time being, yes... This channel will be slowly moving over to the other channel. All the previous Hearts videos that I've already got will be moving across gradually. And then when that's caught up, the newest videos will get released following that. But for the time being, videos will continue to be uploaded to this channel. But like I say, link to the channel is in the description. If you go across and sub, if you haven't already, you'll be up to date when the Hearts videos start to get released on that channel instead. So anyway, without further ado, we're here to do the awards and transfers today. More or less just the awards. The transfers will be in the next episode as we'll have that Super Cup game as well. But we need to look at the depth of the squad anyway. That'll be something that we'll look at towards the end of this episode. As it nearly caught us out this season. You know, there was many a time that we just didn't have the depth. We saw players and we didn't really recruit. Barrero and Garone basically bringing them in have helped us out because that was a last minute decision in January and they've ended the season winning four bits of silverware so that's good enough in itself but without further ado let's get into the awards this one should be a tasty one. So my overall best 11 then shows Gory and Goal, Finley, Lombardo, Sutar and Clark with Rina Motta and Shalabar as me too with Divine and Burn and then Brown and Mitrovic. Did anybody get in? I don't think so. Daryl Court, Juan Cuato, Leon King and Martin van der Voort have made it into the substitutes. But yet, yeah, the starting 11, as it is gory, he will take some displace and he really will. Players in there, Stevie Centamar, how is he getting on? He is now at Fiorentina, what a player. £40 million Fiorentina paid Newcastle for him, we let him go on a free. That was basically where the wheel started to come off from my transfer policies when that happened. You know, but yeah, that is, that's still... A very old squad. We need to get some of the newer players into there. Mitrovic up front is still doing bits at Middlesbrough. He's transferred. He's joining Zaragoza. How did he get on? 13 goals in 42 appearances. £30 million to spend. And he is going on a free transfer. Ridiculous. So at the end of season review then, you can see four cups straight away. The new arrivals. The standout was Thomas Barrero. We spent £9 million on him. What a bargain. What a player. 20-year-old. Can we make him a full Spanish international? We actually paid less than Udinese paid for him as well. That is absolutely crazy. But yeah, we obviously brought in Adilson. He played two times for us. Ratings-wise, you know, we've got to be happy with them all. But players go in. You know, we let Gory go. Blanco, Lombardo, Melissa Levick. Brown went. How did Brown get on? Brown got eight goals in 12 starts for Gangzu. 45.5 million. But what a player he's been for us. But yeah, Charlie Brown going on as well. But we need to obviously move maybe some of these players out. Munro might go, Jack might go. Or probably Adilson, like I say. Even though he's probably the best goalkeeper at the club, Van der Voort's done more than enough to get, you know, three, four seasons out of him. And he's still just about to go into his prime. When we look at the season results then, obviously, top of the league, 109 points on the ball. We lost one game and that was the final game of the season against Celtic. And then we dropped points to them when we drew against them 3-3 free, free as well. But yeah, plenty of greens there all the way through. There's that draw against Celtic. And then that final game of the season, 2-1. Not ideal. We got B- minus for the board. That's what they thought about that. Champions League. We got C. It wasn't great. We went out third in the group. And in fairness, that was probably the best thing that could have happened to us. We got an A- plus as the board are absolutely delighted. Look at the state of that. Scottish Cup. They're happy with that. And the Bet Fred Cup. Absolute scenes with the treble. The biggest win of the season was a 7-0 victory over St Mirren. The match to remember was a 4-0 victory over Hertha. That could have been absolutely any game this season. 
But that was the one that they chose. And goal of the season was Fanady with a 47th minute goal against Hibs. We've seen that. It was an absolute screamer. Grass cutter when he come on. Reputation-wise, we're now a continental club. Look at that. The club's reputation has increased from national to continental. This will help us track a higher calibre of player at the club, help our support base grow, and really improve our commercial revenue. So there you go. Absolute scenes. Revenue-wise, anyway, you know, it was up and down all across the board. Broadcast revenue down solely because we were in a Champions League, and that's the same for competition prize money. Shirts being sold, then the highest selling shirt was Usami Court. That's one to watch for me. Daryl Court probably next season. And the team lined up like this. Van der Voort, Lynch White, Barrero, Garena, Wanquato, with Kugul, Jap and Sarik, Lamine, Court and Panic. Now that is just solely down to our highest rates. How did Panic get on when he went to Barca? Four goals in nine starts. Actually, 16 goals in 15 starts in the league. That is incredible. What a player he is. What is he valued at? 45.5 million. And he had eight finishing, I think, when we got him. And he's now got 11. This guy, this is guy's going to be a world beater. And he's another one that I couldn't hold back. It's shocking, really, when you think about it. So the accolades then, basically it was a clean sweep all the way through. Won manager of the year, won football writers of the year, won manager of the month basically every single season. Club awards then, fan player of the season was Juan Cuato. Young player of the season was Krugul. It's good to see him there, he deserves that. Sign of the season was Barrero. Goal of the season was Fernandi. we know about. Top goal scorer was Daryl Court with 39 goals this season. Those numbers, 28 goals in 32 appearances in the league. Unbelievable. Most assists was Juan Cuato with 17. Most player of the match awards was Daryl Court with 9. Highest average rating was Barrera with a 7.4. And most passes completed was 82 passes by Steven Jap. Record breakers then, most goals in the match was Daryl Court with 4. And highest transfer received 52 million from Milosa Lavic. Competition award then, European Golden Boy was Daryl Court. Scottish top goal scorer Daryl Court. Scottish PFA Young Player of the Year Daryl Court. Scottish Football Writers Young Player of the Year Daryl Court. An AFC Player of the Year. So that's the Asian Player of the Year was Usami. Caught basically a clean sweep. And history in the making then. Your hard work and effort paid off as we got a quadruple. It was a superb season for the Jambos as they claimed their third successive title to back up their pre-season credentials. So when we look at the seasonal performance analyst report then... Yeah, we were the best, obviously, defensively, and we were aggressive and clinical. XG-wise, they expect us to score 96 goals. We actually got 112 points. 90 points would have won us the league. We got 109, and expected position first, and we ended up in first. Club vision, then, you know, there's all this tat here. We don't care about any of that. Sign high-reputation players, that's good to have now. They want us signing some real world beaters. Five-year plan. Is to work within the wage budget, minimum two-year contracts, and suspend the original transfer budget. Wow, so the transfer budget, I'm sure we'll see that towards the end of this episode. So the end of next season, they expect us to win the league and reach the group stage of the Champions League. We're going to do that anyway. My contract expires in two seasons. I've got plenty of time. When we look at the squad atmosphere and the dynamics, Sarik wants a new deal. We'll look at sorting that out for him. Team cohesion is very good. Club atmosphere is excellent. And managerial support is also very good. When we look at the influencers, I've got two players that have no real opinion of us. That's Sarik and Diatore. But yeah, team leaders, Juan Cuato, Doyle and King. We've got a quality group of players. A small group of players, that is a problem, but we've got a quality group of players. End of season team meet and then, you know, congratulations on winning the title. We should be winning it again next time round. That's exactly the sort of reaction I was after. I'm looking at reaching the latter stages of the Champions League. They're satisfied with that. And then we'll talk about it more when we go on holiday. So they're off, they're on the jollies, off to get a tan and they'll be back shortly, obviously, with hopefully some new additions. So new season team report then. Notable strengths, there's a good standard ahead and the quality is the ability to score from distance. Notable weaknesses, there's some concern about our aerial ability amongst the goalkeepers and there is not a great deal of quality depth outside the first team. I'd agree with that. Injuries wise, I did see an 8 injury there, Usami had 8 injuries this season, his longest injury there was 3 weeks, he's out with a twisted ankle, and what was our longest injury, Diatore was out for 5 months, wowzer, fortunately that wasn't until January, you know he come back fully fit for us when we brought him back, when all our players basically left in the January transfer, end of season break then they all go, Gustavo wins Europa League player of the season, you know, Gustavo, he was quality. He was a player I'd love to bring in. Look at the state of that. 68 million, 170k a, a week. That is crazy. We have got players in the Europa League squad of the season. Van der Voort, Sarik and Court. I will take that. VT, he any good? 
Not really. I'd expect to see more players in these teams as the season's going forward though. So the stadium continues to be expanded then, so we've only just got it extended after having it rebuilt last season, and we're extending it once again. So we're extending it by another 13,500 seats to 41,000 capacity. Every year I reckon that's going to happen. Hadidioff has been accepted. Now this guy is incredible. We're going to spend £100 million on him, but look at him. Look at the state of that. So there's a little bit of a sneak for you. We played against him when we took on Wolves. Finances wise, we've got £251 million to spend and we'll have players leaving, I'm sure. You know, there's a couple of players that want to get off the books. We're probably going to see three or four players leave. I would expect to see eight to ten new players joining us this season. It's not going to push players out, but we need to add some depth and some real qualities we then want to push on in the Champions League. But yeah, if we go back, I've asked... I may potentially spend £100 million on him, but look, he's five-star. He's a worldwide player. with is an elite attacker midfielder. If we get him in, that is incredible. 21-year-old as well. And then we've got the Champions League final, which is Manchester City against Juve. Now, I'm sure we'll play one of them. So Juve make it. Juve knocks City out. Beaten in the final. City couldn't do it. A goal on 80 and 85. A goal on 81 and 83 for them. Wowzers. But yeah, if we play in that Super Cup, which I'm sure we do, we'll play against Juve. So we've been hit with a tax bill of around £27 million. Wow. Club memberships are bringing £1.5 million. I remember when that used to be a lot of money. And we'd sit there going, oh, £1.5 million, that's not bad. When we've just been hit with a tax bill of like 700 k Commercial summary-wise, we've seen all that. New scouting budget, obviously we're going world. We always do. 720 k We've got players called up to international duty for Nady. Could potentially be getting a full cap. That'd be incredible. Lopez, we've got players potential moving to us. So yes, right, where are we going to improve? I think like, you know, team reports, squad depth, where's the areas that we really need to improve? Now up front for me has obviously been a problem. Munro, yeah, we spent big money on him. He's valued at £18 million. If I can get the £23 million for him, he will disappear. Diatore may go, you know, he scored, he scored some big goals for us, don't get me wrong. But we might have to move Diatore on. I don't know. We may still have him come the start of the season. We've obviously got Sarik up there as well. Lamine are players that I'd play there. I want another attacker midfielder. Navarro. Now, he's a very good player. Wonder kid. We did spend big money on him as well, if I remember. £28 million. Didn't really feature as he ended up sticking with a back and Jap. Now, a back is very good as well. 21-year-old Turk. And then, obviously, Jap is a Scottish international. So he will stay with us anyway. Oh, on that right-hand side, we've got Doyle, Sarik and Kregul. Marillo can play there as well. Obviously, Doyle is the main man. Those arrows pointing down, showing him on the decline. But he is injured, that is why. But 31 caps for Scotland. Oh, on the left-hand side, definitely need to improve there. Lynch White and Leon King. Basically, just Lynch White, that is it. Defensive centres, Leon King, Garone and Barrero, that is it. So we need to bring in some more centres. Out on the right-hand side, Juan Quato and Fernady, really. Fernady, we'll have to just wait and see what happens to him. It might be time for him to move on. He's not as progressed as well as I would like. You know, he paid £5 million for him. He's valued at 14.5, so we may get some money in for him. And then in goal, no question. Adilson's apparently the best goalkeeper at the club. He's very good, 22-year-old, but Van de Voort is the man. He has been incredible all the way through. Apparently, he's the third best goalkeeper at the club as well. But for me, he was worth every penny of that £7 million that is always spent on him. But then again, you know, we've got Lietz as well. This guy's 18-year-old. Look at the state of him. He's, he's a world beater, he is. So I don't really know. But that is where we are. You know, we've got plenty of players to bring in. Like I say, I wouldn't be surprised if we bring in 8 to 10 players. I wouldn't expect to see much movement going out. 2 to 3 players, I reckon, at the most. So there you go then, guys. Thank you very much for watching. We've got the awards out the way. Next one's a transfers. And maybe a Super Cup as well. Who knows? So yes, thank you very much for watching. But like I say, keep an eye on those videos moving across to the other channel. Link to that channel down in the description. But yes, thank you very much for watching. It's always been emotional. And I'll catch you in the next one. ta -ra.